Okay, so uh, we're just coming back on a trip, a campaign trip, and I mean, we're just listening to a couple of songs from uh, my career so far, and it, it got us conversing and talking. And one of the things that came to my mind is off the back from the conversation that has been in the media relative to whether CDs or cassettes sold more than that, than uh, digital streaming now. I just need to get into, I just want to be able to get into it very well and understand exactly what 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 it is and all how the people from that era are actually thinking of it. So this song is from uh, my correct uh, Omar. Um, I think it was released in 98. Yes, this was 99. 99, yes. So this was one of your well sold albums. Yes. Okay. So how many how many cassettes at the time? At the time was cassettes. Yes. Okay, how many cassettes in total did you release over the period? For this particular album, actually, it was um, cassettes mainly, then CD had also come out. So, okay. you, you had both cassette and CD. But then, um, the last time I stopped counting, I had sold um, 150,000 pieces of the cassettes, and I had also manufactured um, 20,000 pieces of um, CDs. Of CDs. So, um, so what? You had a record label, or yes. you you were under a label? I had my own record label. I've always had my own record. So we'll just say that you are under the label yes. even then. Yes. Now, being under the label, who was responsible for cutting the cassettes and the CDs? Okay. The record label was responsible in paying the studio fees, doing all the artworks and designs, paying for the cutting of the cassettes, and then we gave it to a distributor to distribute. Okay. So... I mean, after you've invested in the cassettes yes. and the CDs, you give it to the distributor for the distributor to distribute. So, was the distrib- how was the payment structured? Was the distributor giving you advance fee for the number of copies you're going to give to them, or you give to them, they sell, they give you money back? It depends on the album. If the album is a hit album, I mean, a lot of distributors will be chasing you with um, a deposit okay. for you to manufacture for them. But then, it was also um, a way where people, one distributor wants to have a monopoly. Okay. So, and it was always better to have one distributor. So, uh, a distributor will say, okay, I give, I'm giving you an advance. Just manufacture maybe 10,000 copies for me. And then, um, before the 10,000 copies finishes, he brings you another money and you manufacture for them. You just ask the manufacturer to manufacture. Uh, sometimes you give the inlay cars to the distributor. Yes. And previously, we used to have um, a bundle from copyright office, which was government man. But then when it broke down, Bandugo was just there to protect uh, the intellectual property aspect of it, the copy, copy, copyright aspect of it. But then it broke down one way or the other. So individual people did their own record label, did their own um, kind of identification um, programs. I had some. Okay. So I was taking to the inlay card before I give it to the distributor. Either I send it to the manufacturer or give it to the distributor after I've collected my money. Because if the music is hot cake, you don't give your inlay card before you go and collect your money. But then if the music is not a hot cake, then it was like it's a market market uh, strength. If, if if a distributor gives you let's say advance money, yeah. What what is the what is the basis of the of the amount that you give you? Is it um, a per cost uh, a per cassette or yes, I mean most cases it was based on or it was just a it was how were they calculating that okay take this money ahead? So for example, if the record label was giving the cassette to say five CDs to the distributor. The distributor also can give you advance for ten thousand. Okay, so which 10, is obviously five CDs. The, 10, the, the, the equivalent. 10, yeah, the, the, the five CDs obviously divided by the number of five the cassette times, say, times, 10, times the number. Okay. Yes. Okay. So in that scenario, out of the money it gives you so it will be ten thousand divided by five CDs. Exactly. Just to get the number of cassettes you need. Yes. Yes. So so for example, it's either he's going to spend that part of money to pay for the manufacturing or you are going to pay the manufacturer after, after he's giving money, you the money. After he's giving you the money. Okay, okay, okay. So it all was um, calculated within that stuff. So as soon as he gives you that money, some of them were given up to fifty thousand and yes, as, as at ninety nine. As at ninety nine. Which was five hundred million then. Yes. That was a lot of money. Yes. So, but what, was that the, all the money you can ever make from that particular? No. So you see, they give you the advance as they sell up to the number of cassette they sold. That that has to uh, um, uh, uh, in tandem with the the, the, the money they're giving you. Then you have to collect another money. Okay. So so 
So that is how I was going about it. If I calculated at all, okay, okay, I'm getting say, um, uh, say two CDs okay. or three CDs on each cassette. If you give me thirty thousand, thirty thousand means ten thousand. Ten thousand cassettes. Okay, ten thousand cassettes. So if you give me thirty thousand and ten thousand cassettes is finished, you have to give me another thirty thousand before you can go ahead to sell another ten thousand. Another ten thousand. Okay, that's how you're managing it. So such a time where such the demand goes down. So then you count and count and count. It gets to a point where the music has gone into the system, so it's not selling as fast as it used to. Then you lose count. But she keeps on selling and selling. So was it was it this this particular deal? Yeah. Or mod, deal mod, the model yeah. was it the same across, or there were different different other models or scenarios relative to there this? There were different scenarios. It depends on, 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 on the caliber of the artist and how uh, the music is in demand. There were some people who also go and release. It's not automatic that anybody will give you an advance. People will give you an advance knowing that. So the whole situation is the music is ready. You start the, the promotion, yeah. and based on the demand. The wholesaler who, who pays for the promotion here? The record label. The record label. So okay. So sometimes. So so this is it though. Okay. If assuming, for example, you take a fifty thousand CDs yeah. advance yeah. for a certain number of cassettes, yeah. part of the fifty thousand CDs will go into cutting the cassettes Cut, or the go, CDs. Goes into the video. Goes into goes your promotional into promotions. promotions. Goes into everything. So the fifty thousand or the five CDs they are giving you on a cassette, it's not just. Put in the pocket to go and spend. Part of the money was calculated into production and marketing cost. So there's a there's a likelihood that well, if you put all this money into the whole logistics of distribution, promotions, and everything, there's a likelihood that uh, if the future cuts yeah. do not move, you are lost. Yeah, but then it, it, that is where the business calculations comes in. So at the end of the day, the way I used to calculate it was anything, no matter what promotion or whatever, I don't go beyond twenty to thirty thousand on my assets. So, so it was a target. It's a target. So the whole situation is, if I spend money, that will be equivalent to say um, twenty thousand of assets revenue. I stop. I need to get money for the 20,000, extra 20,000, which makes it 40,000. Yeah. As my revenue breaking even and blah, 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 before I invest more. So you do one video, you pay the whatever, whatever, you, have yeah. to pay, you do the manufacturing, you calculate everything. Yes. Even though you have done it a unit, like a unit cost, that's on each cassette, after spending everything, I'm making, say, two CDs. Yes. But initially, before you, because you need the quantum of the investment, you don't take your profit, you just invest it in the marketing and whatever. But as soon as you sell 10,000, 20,000, you stop investing in the promotion. Okay. Then you are collecting money. Okay, so at what point did cassettes in distribution start facing out? And what was the main reason? The reason was when the introduction of CD came in, and then people, it took time, it took a lot of three years, four years. So when people became used to CDs and the new equipment that are coming had no cassette player, but that's CD players, people gradually faded off um, cassettes. So the cassette manufacturing plants in Ghana started folding up and all that. And so then, then so it, was not, it was not necessarily the artists or the record labels or the producers that decided not to cut new cassettes, no, but no, it was no, a no, lifestyle it's, of it's the people. It's a lifestyle, it's change. Change. technological change. Okay. And as of now, even as I'm sitting, a lot of people still goes and find ways to go and cut cassettes. As to who they are selling to, it's another story. Cassettes? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So there are people who still have their cassette players and um, they would want to buy cassettes. Okay, you know. And then um, in terms of CDs, um, at what point um, did CDs start becoming in vogue? Yeah, I mean, like was, if you look at the years, it, it started from 1997. That's seven CDs. No, 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 no. no. Okay. It was ninety-five. CDs. Nin ninety-five. Yes, CDs. Because I remember Balogwe and Akwes. Akwes was released in uh, ninety-four, but then we manufactured CDs in ninety-five, ninety-six. There about, you know. But it was difficult to sell because a lot of people don't have. They didn't, didn't have, have that for ninety-five. Yes, but at what point did it did it go up? Ninety-seven, like, ninety-eight, going up. Okay, that's when the CDs started CDs to come in. Started like seven, ninety-eight. Okay, so uh, 97, 98, 
That's not the time I had released Abiba. Abiba. Yes. So Abiba was released on the CD. No, but still cassette was selling far much. Cassette was the was a popular one. Popular one yes. But you also released it on CD. Yes, yes. And then it went. Yes. Okay. And then um so you moved. Yes. So at what point did CDs become about the only thing that most Produces or 2000, 2000, uh, 2000 there about 2000, uh, 2001 there no, about. no 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 2005 six seven going 2005 six seven. those days people were selling cassette but the CD it was much more so on CDs yes. uh, again just like the cassettes yes. you're cutting your own CDs yes. you're doing the printing of it just like cassettes just like cassettes like okay so um, I don't know if one, can... one thing with the CD was a lot of people were selling their CD rights outside Ghana because okay. most of the people living in Europe and America were much more into CD than people in Ghana. So a lot of people were doing like, okay, I cannot follow up how many CDs this guy is doing because so what I will do is I'm giving you my master tape and my artwork. You go and cut, sell as many CDs as you can in two years. Just two years. Just two years. But and within two years, I'm taking so much. That they, call it, it. They, they call it selling my CD rights. Selling your CD rights. Yes. So you sell it for a two year period. Two year period. And the two year period, whatever amount the person gives you, anything he makes, it being money. Because what was happening was. Because you didn't know how to track exactly, exactly what he was going and to sell. Also, it became, the CD sales became like the profit for the record label. So whatever promotion is doing in Ghana, selling cassette, blah, 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 blah. It was, like sherry, it was like exactly. sherry on top. It was like sherry on top. Exactly. Making sure that it breaks even in Ghana. So whatever CD right he sells, it becomes a profit. He will sell a CD right to somebody in Europe and sell the CD right to somebody in America. Okay. You know? Okay. So for example, an entirety of Europe. I mean, you sell it to somebody, you sell it to America. And often, what you're doing in terms of it. So, what? So what was the dis Okay, well, take me to the distribution plan of a CD or during the CD era. We had, when you drop. We had, as, as a country. In terms of the territories. In terms of the territories, we had have, we have never been in the mainstream or the main shelves in Europe and Africa. So, there was a chain of African shops that they were selling African stuff and all that. that. Those were the places that um, they were distributing our music as well. Whether it's a Nigerian shop or a Nigerian shop or whatever. So that was the uh, distribution point. For point. The... And also at parties, Ghanaian parties. Okay, you know, Ghanaian parties, parties abroad. That, abroad. That's, 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 that, that, that is how they were selling music. So most of the producers of record labels didn't really care as to how you were selling it. The people out there knew how they were selling it. So that is why you could take your And they didn't even care about the numbers. We could sell 100,000 know, as far as on so so, um, so if they were giving you money, like let's say, take this advance for uh, the right for two years. On what basis do they come to, come to the cost? You see, it was kind of a, a, a risky game, you know. For you, the artist, if or the record label, if you say the person should go and manufacture, say, 10,000, the person can manufacture 10,000 anyway, but 10,000 will never be sold once he's cutting behind the scenes selling. Okay. You know, so he will never account for every time, oh, yeah, and why they're buying and told. Meanwhile, he's selling anything behind the scenes. Okay. Somebody also, I mean, I also heard that during that time, that, I mean, where you could take the right, but that, was that happening only abroad, was happening here, so with the local distributors? With the local distributors, honestly, in an interest, it was not in the interest of any artist to sell your CD right local. So when you sell it, people were selling it outside, they were inside the local room. Because the locally, people can go to the shop and buy this, so you can monitor. Yes. So you manufacture, me for example, what I used to do, I'll, I'll manufacture the CDs in Europe, bring a certain quantity to Ghana, and, and, and then give it out for distribution. So the only quantifiable opportunity you had was relative to just Ghana? Yes. But abroad, which which abroad in this case means America everywhere, or Europe? Everywhere outside Ghana. Every for outside example, Ghana. I licensed that in, in Ivory Coast, for okay. example. And you, and you took like a, like your CD rights like money? Me, not only CD rights, CD and cassettes. I, I licensed it out there. But and very few people, very few Ghanaian producers were doing that. I was kind of ambitious, you know. So, I so you expanded? It, yes, yes, I expanded the school. I crossed. And then I licensed it to EMI. 
DMI. The DMI had a big distribution network. So they oh. distributed the CDs around Africa, you know, because that African market was not. So, so how was the deal structured with DMI? Was it like. Uh, there was a was license, it? there was a territorial license. Territorial license. Yes. Were they paying money advance? Were they giving they, advance? They gave me advance, they invited people for promotion and all. DMI? Yeah, yes. And they invested in their promotions? Yes. Wow. They, 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 in fact, they were the people who even held for my video to be played in France consistently for one year. As a way of getting the song to getting to, the, the, the songs to be distributed properly. When okay. the, the, the TV station was called MCN and they were they were transmitted to all the Francophone Africa. Okay. You know? So when they distributed the work, anywhere the, the music went, they knew about it. You know, so that's how Rotuma became popular in Ivory Coast, in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Senegal, in Mali, in Ivory, in Togo, and in all those places. Because the music was in the system and the videos were shown in the system. And then they have a So they were playing the music from France into this, 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 this the territories. So it, it, it really helped. And because of that, I started playing a lot more gigs. So then, in that scenario, your, your revenue stream is multiplied. So the, in the ways I see it, this is also very synonymous to what's happening with digital streams today or digital elevators today, where they pay advance. They are supposed to do the promotion and the playlisting and all of that just so you can get more streams so they can make money, yeah. right? But we are going to go to digital, I mean, soon. But at what point did... So what happened to CDs? Okay. What, actually what happened to CDs? What happened to CDs were... Was it another technological advancement? Another from, technological advancement from streaming? If it, it didn't even start from, from streaming, streaming directly. directly. No, it started from downloading, the chat downloading, and then streaming came in. So the new generation finds it easier because before CDs um, became obsolete, people were complaining that CDs are expensive. You go and buy a CD of say 12 songs and there's only one song that you like. So people preferred to buy the one song you like instead of all the songs. So did you get a point where you started to cut CDs for individual songs like uh, fan favorite? Yeah, I did. I, I think I'm one of the people who started this and then I, I had a problem with it because Canadians were used to getting the whole album out. So when I released the CD single, when those stations got angry with me, that why have I released the CD and I'm bringing it the same? Okay. So uh, I had a problem with it, but then now later on it became the deal because then the song that you believe that or the song that you think people like. So, so during that time, there was there was an opportunity at a certain point in time to rather than put out an album with all the songs on it, you could decide to drop, drop singles of the album. In this yes. way, we do streaming today. Yes, like, like single, for example, singles. what you call what you call EP. EP so yes. one song you do different versions and whatever, and you sell the same song and put it on one CD. Please. And sell it at, at the same rate you would have sold an album. Um, not necessarily, but the price differentials were very uh, minimal. Was so the EP was less expensive. It's less expensive. But the album was, was more expensive, more expensive at the time. The, based on the songs. But it's not something that it caught on uh, very well in Ghana because people were still used to buying an album and have the full, the full, the full song. Song. I can I can confidently say that CDs and all those things, you, you could see your money in bulk in bulk at the other at the other point city time, yes, you see your money in bulk in, in relation to ghana or even selling the city right i remember but when you said in bulk here yes. obviously in digital it happens but are you saying that in relation to after a particular period or you can see money in bulk before, before. so the only difference is that in this particular case you get money before yes. and not so, after so, a particular period of so for example I don't believe that it is easy unless you are very, very, very big. I don't believe that any digital platform will advance you, say, a fifty thousand dollars. So, the, so the, unless you are big. Yeah, unless you are big. Yes. Okay. But here they could do that to yes. any, any artist or whatever. Yes. For example, it depends on them. That's what I'm saying. When the music comes out and you start promotion and people start to demand it, then it makes the advance that you are seeking it makes it big. Because then whoever is going to dispute knows that he will make his money back. Okay. The mistake a lot of the musicians did was the same artists will go 
and record a song this year, promote it and give it to say record label A. As soon as he takes the, uh, the, the big advance, he goes to studio to do another song. Go and take advance, give to record label B. So the double so, the double dealings was not only related to the distributors, but the talents too were also double dealing. The talents were the actual double dealings before the promoters started to do. So what actually happened was now one artist went to the same different type of recordings, different albums for three different record labels, and they release it in the same year. So it becomes a crash. Okay. And then all of them loses their money. So it became difficult. It got to a point now the record labels were like, oh, okay. So now asking for front money, the king's like, oh, if I give this guy money, if I give it to another person, blah, blah, blah. So he said that the mistrust uh, came into the system. Uh, then it became something. Else. And it's also about right, owing your right. Me, I've always been particular in owing my right. I mean, my, friend, my second album was produced by a record company called Cox. Cox. Those days it was local on the Tanisha record label. It was local, local uh, record label, a very powerful one. And then those days it was vinyl and the cassette was then coming in. Okay. When they sold some cassettes, it was a big hit. Vinyl was in the 80s? Yes. Now vinyl was in the 80s. Yes. When did vinyls phase out? I think I'm late 80s. Late 80s, okay. and the cassette took over from yes. the late 80s. Yes. So, so at every point in time, there's been technological, technological trends, trends yes. determining how to consume yeah, the music. Exactly. Okay. So, in fact, those days the vinyls were, were manufacturing some in uh, Ambassador Records in Kumasi and then um, Ghana Films, and then we got to a point we started manufacturing them in, in Nigeria. So, I remember that that album, after we sold a couple of uh, copies, and then my part of the money as an artist that they, they, they paid me. I said, okay, as, as we did the calculation, I said, okay, how much did we spend in studio in terms of the recording cost? They gave me the bill. I said, okay, did that part of my royalties to pay for the studio cost because I want to own my, 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 my master tapes. So uh, how are they calculating the deductions now? They were calculating it based on each cassette. So if each cassette has a no, what was the rate they were using? What was the standard rate? It was not based on standard rate and it was not based on any international standard rate. It was based on acquisition power. Okay. So they would tell you that, okay, each cassette. Well, in my, in my case, they said, okay, every money that we spent, and it was transparent, how much money we are spending in the studio, be, be it the, the production cost as to how much money is to pay the musicians, pay for the studio, transportation, Blah 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 blah. They completed everything. Those days were doing videos. You want to give me and do some video for you as well. So every money we spent, including promotion and whatever, they put it together as a cost. Okay. So as you're selling, they will take off the cost and then share the profit with you. Yes. Okay, so in my case, it was 60-40. 60-40? Yes. I was after getting, cost? After cost. Okay. I was getting 40 percent and they were getting 60. 60. But the after cost, the only thing that in my case they did not add was the recording cost. The recording cost? Yes. So, that's the To a certain time when I got some small money, I, I asked them that, okay, so how much was the recording cost? They showed me and I paid them because I, went, I didn't want anybody to own my master team. So you wanted to own your master team? I wanted to own my master Ever since I've owned all my master team. As soon as I did that, I was thinking to set up my own record label. So every money I got, instead of me spending the money to pay BCD, I invested the money in my record label, started to record in my own works. You know, so everything is owned by me, and then I'll give it out for distribution. So if you are a distributor A and you are distributing my work and I think you are not doing well, I will switch and give to another person. Okay, so for people that are watching, I mean, I know the the whole principle behind masters. Explain to them when you say masters, what is it? You know, why do you hold on to the masters? You know, just for them so that they can in they copyright, those in, who don't understand. Copyright have two legs. Yes. Before anybody took me to studio, I have already written my songs, and the songs were owned by me. Yes. And they listened to some of the songs and they said, "Oh, this one can be a hit. That one can be a hit." Yes. Then they took me to studio and paid for the studio. Sound. The recorded sound. It's out of it that they are going to duplicate it to sell. Okay. 
So I paid them to get back my recorded sound. So now this recorded sound became a property of my recording. Okay. So often, what do you then do with the masters in future? Just for people to understand okay. why you, why why artists are bent on holding on to the masters. I mean, so, so that so when we are done, we'll go back to so this. So now let me give you some instructions. Yeah. Imagine that I had all the recordings I've done over 25 albums. Imagine that all these recorded sounds were owned by different record labels. I would not have the right to give it to any digital platform. Yes. Because the recorded sound is not mine. It's not yours, yes. And I could not, even if, for example, somebody had used my music for an habit, yes. it wouldn't be me to go and change them to be the record label. So that is the reason why I wanted to own all my So the whole idea behind artists wanting to keep their masters is that they want to be able to, to be in control and exactly. to receive the residual income exactly. and not the people that hold the masters. So for example, right now I have a song, Mabo, Mabo, Mabo. I've still not put it on the digital platforms. For some specific reason. Like, but, but the videos is on YouTube. The video is on YouTube. Yeah. But it's only recently that I put, it's not video, it's recently that I put put it on uh, YouTube. YouTube, yeah. But I've not even put it in on the iTunes and any places. Okay. You know, it's not all my songs that are on digital platforms. I wanted that no, but control. Okay. You know, so now anybody. So today, how do you check? You know, there's also something called digital piracy. Yes. So there could be somebody who has created uh, an account to say Tunko or uh, purports to be the right owner of a song. It could be yours. I've seen that happen because I work in digital streaming. And then they load the songs. When they load the songs, the digital streaming, the, the streams will happen. And stuff. Because recently I was talking to Hama and Hama was telling me that Adam had gone on Apple Music and actually purchased an album called Sounds of Our Time, you know, and so, but he did not put it there. He didn't give it to any aggregator to put it there. How do you, do, do you put in mechanisms to check for all these things? So, this is where the difficulty is. This is where the difficulty is. And then, um, initially, when this digital platform started coming, I made sure that some of the songs that um, I saw on YouTube and blah blah blah. Uh, when I set up my own YouTube platform, I inform YouTube. Yes. Um, so they so they collect the revenues for you. Mm, the the revenues for you. Revenues and then, um, other people have also pirated my works, be it um, doing a cover version of my songs or whatever. Mm -hmm. You strike I, them down. I strike, I strike, I strike all of them down. And okay. Okay. So I'm I'm going to disaster streaming now, but. Just to understand, during your, your CD era and the cassette era, what was the bigger, bigger revenue channels? The sales or performances or endorsements? Or, in, I mean, in our days, there were no endorsements. There were the, no the endorsements. That's what I'm saying. had not understood or had not bought into and, and using an, an artist as a brand ambassador. I would have made a lot of money if. They had got into that. So in my time, I did not get any endorsement. I don't think any of my contemporaries got any endorsement like today. So that one was positive. Sure. Secondly, Ghana was not ready to pay for performance as Ghana is paying for performance today. today. At the time. At the time. If I've ever paid good money in performances, it is now. Previously, they wouldn't pay you that much to perform. So most of our incomes were coming from the record sales. The record sales. There was there was nothing like merchandising or anything. It is when the streaming came in that the actual revenues from record sales diminished. That artist decided that oh, this is only because as soon as the music comes out, everybody has a copy. So how do I get my money back? And this collapsed. That, that at the time, that wasn't streaming. That was a, the free digital downloads. Free digital downloads. And so at the time, we're transitioning from CD to, to, exactly. to now where we have the streaming itself. In fact, itself. the global music industry was in, 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 in profusion. At the time. At the time. So, uh, so this is what? This is just about 2008, 2009. Actually, 2007, 2009, yes. 2010, yes. thereabouts. So all those times, it was confusion, confusion. So music came to zero. I mean, people were not making money. And then it took some time before Ghana started. How about how about ring back tones? Ring back the tones. The color, 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 
what you share was the people who were into it they were into digital stuff they knew what much when they were cheating everybody because for example they were uh, depending on the telcos and the telcos would take their money and give them maybe 20 percent and out of the 20 percent they'll come and share and give you some and, and you didn't have access to check for the back end no 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 what was going just online streaming online streaming so, and then even up to today the digital streaming Ghana is yet to actually benefit from it because due to the algorithms yes. no matter how good your music is if you drop it on any, any digital platform if there is no you don't have a creator who is making sure that he's putting money behind it to exactly. promote it nobody will know it you know just like you posting something on Facebook yes I mean if it's a personal you have only 5,000, access to 5,000 people. No, but, but you set up your professional list. But the, 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 other, the other argument that has been made is the fact that, unlike the CD or cassette era where you're, you, you're, you're, you, had, you had control of your local market and internationally, you didn't have a control, you didn't have a ways to check or do anything, streaming or digital streaming today gives you that option. Yeah, right now. So 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 that now so that now you don't have to necessarily think about oh Ghana alone because no, no, maybe no, 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 no. okay so you right think about now, from a global streaming has become much more profitable than those days of CDs. Okay. So now so as, as, as you speak to now yes. and not the era when digital was transitioning. No 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 no. We are talking from now, now. Now. Even from now, if you put the music there and you don't know, you don't have the tools to market it for it to be visible. You still don't make that much, but if you know, but it was the same as the CDs as well. The same thing if you CDs, put it out and cassettes, and if you put it out, you are not able to market it or push it it's and the everything. Same. You will not sell CDs. But you see, don't sell the good thing is, the good thing is, even now, Abiba. Yes. I'm making much more money on the track Abiba alone than the time I was selling CDs. Whoa. Whoa. Because we see Abiba became a very big song people are still discovering it yes disco still discovering it on uh, 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 YouTube. YouTube and other platforms other also platforms. for example if I have to put money behind the brand so I to do proper marketing Abiba will become a new song to me a different people. all I need to do is they will do a new video what is video and introduce you to newer newer audiences newer audiences because the sound is as good it's far better than some of the sounds that have been recorded today okay so all I need to do is Brand up, but do a good video and whatever it is, it will become something completely new. To who, who knows I'll be back in Japan or in, in, in yes. China or yes. whatever. The world is big, you know. That is the reason so why that's, that's, the, that's the scope streaming gives exactly. you today. Exactly. You know, that is the reason why I'm in Russia. Recently, I got some people downloading or streaming my songs from Russia. Oh. Previously, it would have been difficult. Difficult, yeah. Even though I have not done any proper marketing, so I'm saying that if I am to really, really do proper marketing, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing good recordings, good recordings, and make sure my music is on all platforms before I start marketing. And as I start marketing, so that explains why you've not put all your music no, on no, the platform. No, no, it's just no, no. a few of the songs. Yes, some of the some of the stuff I'm playing now, none of them is in the platform. So as soon as I start to put all of them, then I must do touring. So the more you are performing, the more people are going to stream your music, the more people are doing then it, 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 yes. it place. So the like the touring activates the music. Exactly. Okay. And a lot of people, I mean, one song, people will stream it and stream it and stream it and stream it. I have, and, and I have a question on that. So at the time, if I buy a cassette and I buy or I buy a CD and I take it home, I can listen to it a particular song a million times. Yes. What about I pay to you pay the cassette or the CD? That's all you can make. That's for the different me. thing. But now you can stream my music, listen to it hundred times, and you pay for it hundred times. That's okay. the difference. That's the difference. So the, the opportunity now, there's opportunity now for you to make more, more money, money even than CD. Because and the, the, the good aspect of it is, you don't even with streaming, you don't have to play the whole songs. As soon as you play it more than I think ten seconds, seconds, ten seconds, seconds you, start, you begin to earn money. You begin to earn money. That is the most important thing. So, um, okay. So you are an you are an artist that experienced vinyl. Um, you are an cassettes. artist that experienced cassettes. You also experienced the CD. CD. Um, you saw 
that frustration phase where the whole world was transitioning from all these to digital streaming and there were a lot of piracy and all of that to digital there were a lot of piracy now streaming is in the world it's become more structured than it used to i mean now the platforms are there the opportunity to have the deals and everything is there what what is your view what is your view uh, relative to what a cd uh, uh, sells more than uh, okay w will you say or will you agree to any assertion that today cd sales will be more profitable than digital streaming no 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 that's what that would be a uh, uh, nine day one it's not true you see at the global market, even now, vinyl are bouncing back, but you cannot compare the sense of vinyl to streaming. Yes, you should. They bounce back mainly for the nostalgic for effect. Nostalgic effect. Yes. CD is still going down because uh, streaming is moving yeah. up. So you it's can have, yeah. it's gone down for apparently, but it, it, it keeps going down at a rate of 74 percent. Yes. So it's 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 yeah. So the whole situation is. Yes, people are attached to the fixation, the, the, CDs. Yeah, you know, the CDs and all that, but trust me, I'll give you a simple example. Some of my earlier recordings, if you ask me, I don't even have a problem. Oh. And then my master tapes, those days were using the um, wheels, and then they get um, moist, and then so you can't use it. Now, a song you recorded, the song that you recorded in the 80s. In the 80s, so I've lost some okay. of the songs, I had to go back to studio. If it was today, all I need to do is finish the recording, put it on YouTube, it will be forever and ever. You see the difference? And you'll we'll be earning money forever and ever. When you die and go, your, your children and your grandchildren are earning money. That is the difference. That is why it is very, very imperative. And that's why I told you that I'm spending time and investment to do my recordings properly. Recordings that can stand the test of time so that no matter how technology changes, it still sounds, it sounds as good as, 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 as that, that particular era. Exactly. And then now, you don't have to go spend money to manufacture any CD. You don't have to go spend money to do an artwork, to go and print a paper artwork. Yes. You have a digital artwork. Artwork. One so single artwork. artwork. Yes. Artwork. yes. So, so it's like... So it's become more convenient. More convenient. And you're releasing in singles. People couldn't have the opportunity to listen to the whole album before you sell. But this time, because you're releasing in singles, people can have time to consume the single before another single comes out. Okay. Okay. So I think that um, um, the debate is still ongoing, but from this part, uh, I think that it's still, I mean, today, what we've been talking about today, digital streaming still um, has an edge or, over um, CD sales. We can keep the conversation going, but all of this is just to so give us... I'll, I'll give you a simple yeah. example. There are songs that I put on, some of the that were from, say, 10 years ago. Yes. But then I uh, will send me a thousand dollars. Oh. And then, so like the song, this one said five hundred dollars. Even yesterday, yesterday, out of publishing, they said, oh, Rex, you have some six hundred dollars here. You know? So it's coming from different, what, different, from different, the digital streaming. From the digital streaming. You know, so you are getting, because, because of the way the systems have been created to, to, to monitor digital streaming, it's like, so long as your music is coded with the ISWC and ISRCs and all those things, wherever the music is used, you get your money. Okay. You know? So one, one day, uh, uh, we'll go deeper into copyright yeah. issues and everything, but I mean, uh, it, this is this is some of the things that I plan to do um, as and when we are traveling on campaign and we go up the campaign and we're coming back. I mean, I'll spend some more time I mean, that I correct. Mean, I mean, going look, let me explain something to you. For yes. example, now, if Rex Oma is going to perform live, yeah. previously, you perform live, those who pay the ticket to come and watch you, they finish the show and it's finished. Go. Now, you record it properly, as you're performing, you're streaming. You're streaming, yes. The people are watching are also paying. Yes, they are paying, And of then course, when yes. you finish the recording, yes. the thing is still on YouTube. Every time anybody goes to watch the show, he's still paying. So it makes sense now yes. to do your own show, your own even show. if you're not going to get, say, match ticket exactly. or sponsorship. Obviously, there's some residual revenue that you can make over the recorded video exactly. over time. All you need to do is make sure that the technicalities are right, the sound is right, the quality is right, and that's it. It's there. And 
That's that's quite insightful. Um, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a, a, a good idea to play just before we end this your song a version of your song with manifest. Yes. Okay. We won't play full version of it because it's not out yet. And obviously, even though if even though it's in this video, if I publish it on Facebook or anywhere, it will still has the song anyway. So that's why we won't play a lot of it. We'll play just a a few seconds of it, maybe from the first part of it. So I guess has a song with manifest. It, it has a more manifest one. That's a song. Okay. So give me the volume. We'll listen to the first part of the song, the manifest first rap, and then it ends. So that I mean we can still protect the copyright in mean, the publishing. Follow my bit so that they can just So that we can protect the copyrights but i mean next time join us when we go on campaign yes we are campaigning we are selling the good message of ndc relative to the creative arts um, there's a lot of good ideas and good uh, 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 and plans and promises that um, is in the manifesto of the ndc and our spokespersons for creative arts or creative industry for the party we go on the campaign tours to speak to the various advanced viable groups and then do a lot of interviews and helping to promote as and when we finish the work and we are coming back like this, I'll come back to you with a little more uh, exciting interactions with uh, Anchorex. I'm sure the next topic, we have, we are going to West enough next week. I'm sure the next topic will be more on copyright. Copyright has come, it needs a lot more attention. Um, and so I'm sure that a lot of people will get, will get, a, um, um, will be interested in what copyright is and everything for industry going forward, what should guide, how all of this should be treated. So, Thanks very much for watching this one. Um, you can share it as uh, much as possible to a lot more people that are interested in the arts to gather some insight and knowledge. Thank you for watching.